Welcome to part four of engine building. So now we're going to look at engine balancing. So this is going to be broken down to three different parts. The first bit is the crankshaft, and then there were pistons and rods to balance as well. So the crankshaft has come out of the engine from factory. In the factory engine, you've got the harmonic damper, and you've also got a dual mass uh, clutch, which is down there. Now, the engine out the factory is only designed to go to six and a half thousand RPM. The faster you rotate something, the more balance is important. So there's two things to look at here when it comes to talking about balancing a crankshaft. You've got the center of rotation, it should go right through the middle of the crank all the way through, because that's where it's rotating around. For the crankshaft not to vibrate, the center of mass must also be on the exact same line. If the counterbalance is here, or any part of the crank is slightly heavier on one side, then you'll have the centre of mass move from the centre of rotation to be slightly off. Now, this mass is going to start to wobble around the crankshaft, and it's going to cause the crankshaft to oscillate in the bearings. If you're only at 6,000 RPM, and the amount of oscillation you've got is acceptable, it's fine. But then if you go and increase your engine revs even higher, the amplitude of that oscillation as the frequency increases is going to get even higher. Another factor is people like to remove these heavy harmonic dampers and they also like to remove the dual mass clutches and fit single solid mass flywheels. Well, all these devices here as well are there to counteract and dampen the effect. The LEH also hasn't got the balancer shafts, the Z20 LET did, and those balancer shafts were driven by the crank in order to counteract the vibration to make the engine run smoother. So there's a level of vibration that's acceptable in terms of smoothness for that nice smooth driving, but there's also a level of balance and vibration that can cause damage. If this crankshaft is wobbling inside and out the bearings, you're going to get premature bearing wear because the, this, this surface here should never be touching the bearing. It should be floating on oil as it rotates round. If your center of mass and your center of rotation are the same point, then the crankshaft will sit in the middle of the block and move around just fine. However, if it's not, it's going to start to vibrate and move around. And as the faster you rev the engine, the more likely are that you're going to touch the uh, bearing material and cause wear. So you can't really balance your crankshaft yourself. You have to go to a machine shop. And one thing people also do is they just take the crank down there, get the crank balanced. Well, that crank might not be balanced. But if you go and bolt a solid flywheel to the bottom of that crank on here, if that flywheel is not balanced, or if it has, let's say you're in a small tolerance, you've got it as close as you can, it's not 100% perfectly balanced, but you've got a slight bit of mass off, off to one side of the crank. If you bolt a flywheel with a slight offset of a similar mass on the opposite side, it'll counter out, it'll can cancel out even. But if you bolt your flywheel the other way around, you've got one bit of mass here, one bit of mass here on the flywheel over here, they're going to add together and increase the forces on the crankshaft. So the proper way to get things balanced is to take your flywheel and clutch assembly, your crankshaft, your pulley at the end, your um, cam belt pulley and so on, all as one complete unit. Take it to a machine shop that's got a balancing machine and have the entire assembly balanced together. That way any vibration can be minimised by machining the crank or the or the flywheel or whatever part needs to be balanced out properly and then put them together and ensure they rotate together in balance. So if you look closely here at the crank you can see there's various holes. Now these holes are drilled in there to act as a balancing um, adjustment. To try and counteract the mass on this side of the crank you have mass here. But if there's a vibration, you need to modify it somehow. So you either need to shave material off around here, or you need to put little drill holes in here. Now, normally, the way the cranks are designed is extra material here, so you're always removing material from, the, from these parts, the counterweights. So next, we're going to balance our pistons. To balance the pistons, we need to weigh all the pistons and work out which is the lightest piston. When you're weighing your piston, you want to get your pin and your circlips and weigh them all together. Because that's so you're, you've got a piston that's slightly light and you've got a pin that's slightly heavy 
or vice versa, you need to know the total weight. Because if you start mixing pins that are different weights around in your pistons, well, you're just going to ruin your balancing that you've just done. So unwrap all your pins and circlips, insert them in the bottom of the piston, like so, and then we're going to weigh each piston individually. Determine which piston is our uh, lightest piston, and then we need to modify the rest of the piston so that they match that weight. Now let's say this piston here is slightly heavier. Depending on your piston manufacturer, they might have different recommendations how to do this. You might remove a small bit of material along here. You might put little dimples into here. But basically, we make small little adjustments by removing small amounts of material. Say you want to use a Dremel just to just to rub away some material from here, or you maybe you want to uh, use a drill bit just to put some little dimples, kind of like you do in the crankshaft in the bottom of the piston. It's best to speak to your piston manufacturer for the best point to do it. So you don't want to do it on a weak part of the piston. You want to find where there's plenty of uh, material and modify it from there. Right, I've got all my pistons. One more thing to add, I forgot to mention earlier, you also need all your piston rings because they also contribute to the mass of the piston. So when we're weighing it, we're weighing all the piston rings, the pin and the circle lips all as one. You'll need a small scale that can read down to hundredths of a gram. So that's 0.00. .00. Uh, and then you need to weigh each piston three times. The reason we're doing this is because each time you weigh it, you'll find the scale give you ever so slightly different reading. Before you weigh it, reset your scale to zero to remove any residual. Pop your piston on the scale, and here we've got a 451.37. And on again. And you see what I mean, we get a slight different reading, 451.41. And 451. just changed to 4.0. And what we'll do is we'll add these three together and average it to give us our average weight. You can see even though, you're just touching the table, can move the reading ever so slightly. So you need to let it settle. You can see again, we've now moved to 4.1. So take more than one reading and average them. So we get our next piston as well. And you can see we're nearly, it was more than the ground difference. So you get all these things on the, on the boxes saying, oh, everything's balanced to, um, you know, 0 0.01 of a gram. And the truth is, let's also tear our gauge. It's not, we've got over a gram difference on this piston alone. Four, Five zero point six. Mm, move to four then. Let's tear it again. Just be sure. Do that one again. Four five zero oh, six. It's kind of oscillating between two and three. So we'll put we'll call that one two because this one also oscillates between six and four. So we'll take that as a four five zero oh, point six two. So we carry on to this for pistons three and four, and then we'll average them and then see what our lightest piston is. So with all our measurements completed, I'm just averaging them up now. Just to remind anyone how you average them together is you take your measurements and you add them together. Add 451.40. And that gives you a total. Divide that then by the number of weight weighings you did and this averages out at 451.393. So this is a 451.393. So looking at here, we've got quite a range, nearly 0.8 of a gram difference between this side and this side. So this is our lightest piston, number four. So we're gonna to look to modify the other three by removing small bits of material to get them down to the same weight. If you can get them down to the same hundredth, great. If you can get them down to the same tenth, probably acceptable. But the better you can get it, the better your balance will be. If you go too far on one of these, that becomes your new lightest piston. And this one and the rest will then need modifying down to the new lowest value. So what you wanna do is remove a little bit of material at a time, just like you do with piston rings and everything else, a little bit at a time, slowly but surely. Grind away the small bit of material, whether it be along, along here, or in the bottom, however it's been recommended for your specific pistons to be modified, make the modification a small bit at a time, 
and reweigh the piston again, doing it three times and averaging it. Once you've got a good reading on all four that are the same, your pistons are ready to go in your engine because they're now balanced. So I've now put all the piston rings and the pins and the circlets back with the rods in a safe place. So they're all back in order with their original rods back over my table. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is start dropping them, mixing them up and losing them so that they've been put away safe. What I've then done on the other side of the sheet before is I've worked out the average weight and the difference given the amount of material we need to remove per piston. I've now re-weighed our pistons so we don't have to keep weighing them with all the, all the other bits as to what their current weight is. And then I've worked out how much material we need to remove and what the target weight will be. So now I've got a target weight, we can remove the material from that piston to get it down from its current weight to its target weight. Now you'll notice here that number two is now the lightest piston um, in terms of target weight, but not the lightest piston overall when it's got its rings and pinion in. So we're still going to match the, the overall weight of all the components together to be equal to number four, but we're not trying to match the current weights here together. We're just trying to get them down from the current weight to the target. So when we add the weight of all the pins and, and the piston rings and the circlets for that particular piston, they will all average or balance out to be the same. So we're not trying to get these to the same now, we're just trying to get the piston down to its target. We know this one with its rings is the, is, is the lightest, so we'll leave that one alone. And we're going to modify these three, and to be fair, number three, ever so slightly, because I, if I'm aiming for, say, 0.1 of a gram, that's already in spec. If I'm aiming for 0.05 of a gram, it's the smallest tiny bit of material off that one. Uh, these two need a bit more work. This one's nearly a, a, a gram, needs to come off this one nearly. So we'll focus on these two the most, a tiny bit on this one, and leave this one alone. And then again, once we put all the piston rings on it, and we weigh them again, they should all come out exactly the same. But the reason I've done it this way is just so we're not constantly picking up piston rings, putting them down, picking pistons up, taking them away to, to modify them, bringing them back and risking dropping things, moving things around or losing things. So I've just put all the stuff away to be safe so it can't get mixed up or lost and just got the pistons on their own. So we've got a start weight, how much to remove and a target weight. And what we'll do is make a small modification, come back, weigh each piston three times over and then get as close to our target weight for that piston as possible. So with our pistons complete, we now need to balance our connecting rods. Now, connecting rods are slightly different because we don't want to, want to balance the overall weight of the rod. We want to make sure that when we balance the rod, that we haven't got a rod that's heavy on the big end and another rod that's heavy on the, light, on the little end. We want them to be balanced evenly, both big and small end. So to do this, we need to measure the rod's weight on the big end independently of the small end. And what we use is an apparatus like this. We suspend the rod from this side on the little end and we put the big end on here. So you need to zero your scale with the big end holder already on it. And when you're using this machine, you want it to be as stable as possible. So if you can find a way of securing your scale and securing your, um, your stand here on the scale so it doesn't move, that will give you the best accurate reading. We'll do the same as we did before, we'll take three readings. We'll then average the readings. Now, given this equipment can move around, it may be worthwhile doing five readings and averaging them to give you a more stable result. But effectively, we install the connecting rod onto the scale like so, making sure that we've got it aligned and that it's sitting squarely on this side and this side. We'll take our measurements again and we'll write down three values and we'll average them out. Once we've done this, we can work out which has our heaviest and lightest rods. We'll try and make the big ends all weigh the same. Now to do this, we will remove material from the side here. Just, far, just sand away a small bit of material from the side of the rods. Don't get tempted to, to move it, anything around the bottom here, because these ridges are a strengthening part of the rod. So it's just the size we want to take a little bit away from here and on here and re-weigh each rod until all the big ends average out to be the same weight. Once we've done this, and all three, or four rods rather, weigh the same on the big end only, we then need to balance the little end. Now because we know the big end always the same, what we can do is we just weigh the rod on its own. Same again, taking three measurements from the rod and averaging them, we can work out which is our lightest and heaviest rod again. We can then gently remove material from the top end of the rod, try not to do too much in one place and to just remove it sort of around the top end re-weighing the rod until we've got all four rods weighing the same. So 
to repeat, we will balance the big ends first using the scale on this apparatus. And then once complete, we will measure the rod overall to adjust the little end. Once all four rods are balanced, then you can go ahead and install your rods in your engine. Right, it's getting pretty late here now. It's gone at least 10 p.m. I'm filming this in the evenings. It's the only way I can get some quiet without the phones going constantly to uh, interrupt filming. I will actually be balancing the rods properly tomorrow, having the, using the process I've shown you. Uh, if I can get you the results for the next video, I'll include it. But the next video, once the rods are balanced, will be to assemble the engine one more time for a test assembly. And then it will be stripped down for a complete deep clean and then the final assembly. So hopefully in the next video I can show you the, uh, the full assembly. Thanks for watching.